Welcome back to Firefly Studios. My name is Katia, and today we'll be continuing our Unity Fundamentals, going into transform.translate as a method of movement. It's a pretty straightforward method, uh, so let's jump right into it. So what I have set up is this head here that's going to spawn a projectile that's going to move towards us. And then the code for that is right here. So we have a direction, which is just a vector two, and a speed. And we'll use the rigid body for different type of movement. But for this, all we do is in the update loop, we do transform.translate direction times speed times time dot delta time. All the time that delta time does is smooth things out. So on a fast computer and a slow computer, they behave the same way. So what this will do, and no, I do have a collider set up on this is it is going to spawn a projectile right by his mouth and then it's going to move towards us and it's just going to move in that direction now one thing of note is that the way the movement is actually working is let's pretend this is our uh projectile here frame zero we're going to be here frame one we just teleport forward a bit then the next frame we teleport some more then the next frame we teleport some more so it doesn't use the physics engine or anything like that to calculate its movement. And that can lead to some kind of wonky interactions. For example, I'm going to spawn a square right here. It's got a box collider and it has a rigid body 2D attached to it. So physics will interact with it. It has a gravity, so it's going to fall down. And notice how the projectile interacts with this cube. So the colliders do hit, but it behaves weirdly. So what should happen is if a projectile was to hit a box like this, is it should hit the box and then move the box. It should not have the force to actually rotate the box as you saw it doing. So in order to interact properly with physics, what we have to use instead to get a similar behavior is rigidbody.velocity. So what I have right here is a reference to my rigid body. I'm being lazy and just assigning it in the inspector. Uh, so I just dragged from this component over to the slot. And then we're multiplying our direction times our speed. Same thing as we did there, times time dot delta time. However, this number is going to be have much less effect than it does on translate since it's not directly teleporting. So I just multiplied it by 25 so we can keep the same speed value of 10 and still look close enough to the same. When I press play, with that swapped out, notice it's going to hit it and it's just kind of like rock it a little bit and then it's just going to push against it. And that would be the behavior that you would expect to happen in a physics engine. This is opposed to our rigidbody.addForce, which we talked about when it came time for our character's movement in the last video. I believe we have that where when you press the button, it kind of pushes our character forwards a little bit, which also leads to physics interactions. Now, the force that this uh, projectile is pr projecting on this box is stronger than the force I'm projecting onto it by moving against it. So I can't stop it. I can slow it down, however, which is how physics would act in that case. I hope you found this interesting. Uh, translate is very simple and velocity is also equally as simple. Um, pretty much, it just comes down to how do you want physics to interact with your object? Do you want physics to interact as it should? Then use rigidbody.velocity. Of note, this isn't a fixed update. This is just the loop for any physics calculations. If you don't care about physics, you can just use transform.translate in the update function. It's completely up to you. Hope you have a good rest of your day. Please hit the like and subscribe buttons, and I'll see you in the next one.